It's Scary Movie Month, and you know what that means. Old franchise die hard. We have The Exorcist coming back all these years later, resurrected, just to be killed again. But is this movie as bad as the early reviews are saying? Well, the girls and I are going to talk about it right now in this review. From the guy who brought us the new Halloween trilogy, David Gordon Green, comes The Exorcist Believer, the sequel to The Exorcist. A movie that scared the living crap out of your grandparents and kind of doesn't hold up today. But we have modern technology and makeup and effects work. We can make something truly unforgettable. We, we didn't, but we could have. Because as it stands, The Exorcist Believer, it's okay. So it's, it's alright. My boy David Gordon Green is eyeing for a new trilogy taking place after the first film. So I think he didn't quite go all in as he had planned because if you think you're doing more than one movie, you hold some stuff back. You keep it close to the vest. You don't go all in. And that's a problem, especially for this film that has the Exorcist name. And it's acting like a soft reboot of the franchise. You have to put it all out there. You have to wow audiences. You gotta scare the crap out of them. This is just such a lame film. It's not bad. It does some bad things for sure, but it's watchable. There's enough going on in it, especially the first half. It's intriguing enough to get you on board. And then you become bored because it's not doing anything else later. As with all movie properties that come back for one or several last rides, we bring back an old favorite, a classic from the original. That's right, Ellen Burstyn's back, baby! As Chris McNeil. She's all over the trailers for this thing, and the amount of time she's in those trailers is pretty close to how much time she has in the actual film. This is not a Jamie Lee Curtis situation where she's gonna come back and be a pivotal role in the film. This is not a Nev Campbell situation when she came back for Scream. She's barely in it. What they do with the character is absolutely stupid, and then we move on with our day realizing, oh yeah, I didn't really care that much to begin with. Now, if you're a big fan of the original, like Gladys and Elaine were up in the front row of the theater I was in, you might have a good time. They clapped when it was over. Granted, they may have clapped because it was over and they could get to bed. I don't know. I probably should have asked them, but then I thought, you know what? These ladies are old. They're going to trap me into some boring conversation I'm never going to get out of. <laughs> old people. They're the worst. Subscribe for ageism. Out with the old, in with the new. What do we have this time around? Well, we got two girls front and center. They're going to get possessed by this demonic creature, this, this thing from hell. And they're going to have to try to figure out how to get rid of it. And mad respect to the actresses. They did a great job. I thought they were fantastic. Easily the highlight. That said, the movie trailers made me think they were going to have a deep connection in this movie. I thought they were going to have some fun with this, go really crazy with things. No. They, they don't. The connection is, is very surface level. It's not that fun to watch. I was bummed out. I thought, all right, this is a fresh spin on the subgenre. They're going to have some creative things going on here. No, not, not really. As far as the visuals go, David Gordon Green is no slouch behind the camera. The thing is shot very well. It looks good. The practical effects are great. There is some Harry Potter shit going on later <laughs> with some weird... CGI elements. I half expected one of the characters to whip out a wand and start doing some incantations. Doesn't happen, but we get close. A uh, little, little bizarre. Outside of that, unfortunately, this is just a very par for the course type of film. And this in no way, shape, or form is putting its best foot forward. And that's a problem I have. When you set out already with a trilogy in mind, you're, you're holding some things, and I don't like that. I want to be blown away by a movie. I don't want to go there and just think, okay, well, this is something I've seen a million times in the 500 different Exorcist movies we've had. Give me something different. And that's what I really enjoyed about David Gordon Green's version of Halloween, which is Halloween 2, as everybody knows, the stupidest naming convention ever. I like that they kind of went further into the psyche of these characters. They did slow things down. It was very interesting. And then Halloween Kills comes out and puts, puts all that to rest. It's just kind of remarkable how unremarkable this movie is. I don't need to waste any further time. The Exorcist Believer, competently made. Nothing's going to really wow you at the end of the day. I would wait for it to come out on streaming. And if you're thinking of going just for the theater experience, well, you can live through me if you'd like vicariously. In my movie theater, it was pretty empty. 
Except for the old ladies, there was a guy down in my row. He was very respectful, just wa trying to watch the movie. There were four youngish people in the back. I want to say they were upper 20s, uh, early 30s. It's hard to know because they acted like they were seven. They had their flashlights on their phones, whipping them around at each other. They weren't even facing the movie half the time. I had to keep looking back and, and try to give them evil faces. They didn't care. I looked over at the person across from me for a little bit. He kept looking at me too, thinking, what do we do here? There's nothing we can do because the people that work up front, they're very short staffed and they don't give a shit. It's just kind of the wild west in the theater, at least where I'm at. Unfortunately, I don't have many options. Uh, people have given me advice in the comments. It's, it's not really ever appreciated because it falls on deaf ears. I've done all of this stuff many times. I did end up moving seats. I went closer to the screen. Even though I had a prime spot, it clearly wasn't, uh, it wasn't a good experience. So I moved closer. It, it did dampen the noise in the background, which was nice. Nobody was on their phone, which was good. But yeah, it's just not worth it anymore. It, it, it's truly not worth it. Unless it's something really special. I don't want to waste my time going to the movie theater. I do to get the review out to give you a heads up of what to expect from the film. But it's not really that fun anymore. And that just kind of sucks. And speaking of not very fun anymore, The Exorcist Believer. Those are my thoughts. Let me know in the comments. Did you see it? Did you think it was great? Are you excited for more? Or are you kind of like me where you thought, eh? watchable uh, nothing nothing terrible nothing great just kind of there it has a couple stupid subversion of expectation things for no real good reason and and we're done with it let me know please like the video if you had a good time subscribe if you had a great time i'd love to see you stick around hear more not only do i do reviews i do movie roasts i do live streams it's a great time would love to keep the party going with more people all right share this around if you want as well and hopefully i'll catch you next time take care